Environments with extremely sparse rewards, like mazes for example, are incredibly tough to solve for the current reinforcement learning algorithms. And an algorithm that incentivizes an agent to explore an environment without any external supervision, with just a self-curiosity, will be able to solve all those environments. So how can we build it? In this video, I explain the paper Exploration by Random Network Distillation, in which is proposed a novel technique that provides an exploration bonus based on the difference between the prediction of a trained and a random neural network. As we see soon, this method overcomes some very common exploration issues and allows an agent to explore the environment effectively even without any external rewards. And although this paper is from 2018, it's a pillar method for exploration in deep reinforcement learning. And many newer algorithms propose a variation of this. I'm Andrea and this is Bits of Deep Learning. If you like the content, make sure to give me a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks. Great, let's start. Every reinforcement learning algorithm already balances the trade-off between exploration and exploitation. That is, it knows when to explore some new parts of the environment or when to act on the best policy learned so far. You know, without exploration, the agent performs a deterministic function without ever improving. So a good exploration policy is key in enforcement learning. However, almost all the most popular algorithms like PPO, DDPG, DQN have a very naive exploration policy that sure work well in environments with dense rewards but perform incredibly poorly with very sparse rewards. So how can we encourage an agent to explore? But first, what does it mean to explore? It means visiting new states of the environment. So in a very loosely term, what we need is an algorithm that encourages the visitation of novel states regardless of the presence of the rewards, in a kind of unsupervised way. This is the main focus of many approaches, but most of them lack in fundamental ways. Reinforcement learning is based on the rewards, so to encourage the visitation of these novel states, we need to reward the agent for doing it. And this is the role of the intrinsic reward. It differs from the extrinsic reward in that it is controlled by the agent and by its history. On the contrary, the extrinsic reward is part of the environment, is fixed, and is what the agent should ultimately focus on. However, to get to the very sparse extrinsic reward, the intrinsic reward is key. A first natural approach that comes to mind to calculate the intrinsic reward is to count the number of times a state has been visited and prefer those with a low counter. However, these methods do not scale up with complex parallel environments. So another approach that has been studied is based on the fact that neural networks have a lower prediction error on examples that have already been used as training examples. This means that observations that are equal or similar to examples already seen during training are not novel and thus they will have a lower prediction error. So, the intrinsic reward is proportional to the prediction error, and thus the higher the error, the more novel the state, and the higher will be the intrinsic reward. 
at this point we have only half of the solution. We still need to define how we compute the prediction error. The most known is based on the forward dynamics that predict the next state based on the current state and the action. So in this outlook, if you are able to predict exactly the next state, this means that you have already visited many times and the intrinsic reward will be very low. Nice and done, isn't it? Mm, no. See, this system has an unintended feature. Can you see what happens when you have already been in that state a lot of times, but the environment in that space is very stochastic? Exactly. The prediction error will erroneously be very high. And so the side effect is that the agent will be attracted by stochastic transitions. The solution proposed in the paper that we are about to talk today is called random network distillation and solve the unintended behavior by learning a deterministic solution instead of a stochastic one. By the way, there's a, an alternative solution to the stochasticity problem that is based on the inverse dynamic. And so if you are interested in a video explaining it, let me know in the comments below. Going back to random network distillation, I said that it learns a deterministic function to its input. But what is the deterministic function? In this case, it's just a fixed, randomly initialized neural network on the observations. Let me briefly provide a, provide a visual sketch of random network distillation. Basically, it has two neural networks, a fixed and randomly initialized network F called target, which set the prediction problem, and a learner, a predictor F hat, that is trained on the data collected by the agent. This predictor is trained with gradient descent to predict the outputs of the target network on the observations collected. So the most you train the predictor network on some observations, meaning you have visited the state multiple times, the more the output will approximate that of the target network. And consequently, the prediction error and the intrinsic reward will be low. Basically, you are executing a distillation process of the target network in the trained one and using the error as the exploration bonus. Okay, now you can understand where its name random network distillation derived. Random network from the fact that the function learn is a random neural network and distillation in the sense that the random neural network is distilled into the learner. Cool. I hope it's clear. Let's now turn our focus on the experimentation. Does random network distillation actually decreases the prediction error in function of the number of times it sees that input? Yes. At least when trained on a toy model of NIST. For example, here you can see that the mean square error of a test set decreases as the number of samples of a target class seen in the training set increases. The combined random network distillation with proximal policy optimization or PPO, a policy gradient algorithm. They also separated the learning of the value function for the intrinsic reward and the extrinsic reward using two separate heads. Comparing random network distillation with PPO baseline, you can see the sharply increment brought by the random network distillation algorithm in pretty much all six of the most difficult Atari games from an exploration point of view.
Note that in the same way that designing the reward function of an environment is very complex and if not designed carefully may result in unintended solutions, the agent with a wrong intrinsic reward may lead to accidental behaviors. For example, when the extrinsic reward are exploited, the agent may behave in strange patterns of interaction with dangerous objects to keep the intrinsic reward high. Lastly, the authors of the paper noted that the random network distillations provides a good local exploration that involves short-term decisions but does not behave comparably well on long-term consequences. By the way, I'm planning to review a follow-up paper that uses random network distillation in combination with another exploration method to further push a long-term exploration of the environment. So make sure to subscribe to the channel and drop a like if you like the video and learn something new. I'm Andrea and this is Bits of Deep Learning. Have a great day.